those hazy days of summer with a fever dreamy summer feeling. I could be being, you know, red herring and misled. Hey, just get your kids therapy. Hello, it is Summerween this week. I have not been in done a readathon that was an official readathon that someone was running uh, for a very long time. Oh, I'm Roshi, by the way, if you don't know. I have been talking on this channel for a while about how when it is hot and sticky, for me, that feels like the perfect time to read creepy weird books more so even than in the autumn and i will leave all the information about summerween in the description if you want to go and check that out it is run by gabby reads and olivia reads a latte and there is an instagram and a discord and prompts and everything so the prompts are to read a book in the dark or at night um and i probably will read at night although it doesn't get dark till quite late here now read a thriller so I have Leave the World Behind by Ruman Alam, which I bought fairly recently um, and I'm looking forward to reading. It is described as a thriller on Storygraph, but I've also known a lot of people have said it doesn't really feel like a thriller. Um, and I think that's gonna work for me because I'm not really a thriller reader. Then we have read a book set in the fall or the autumn as I would call it. And I don't know if any of these are set in the autumn, but we will find out as I go along. The third, fourth one was to read a book with orange or black on the cover. I've also decided to read Sundial by Katrina Ward and this coppery orange metallic definitely I think counts. And then the final one was to read a novella. And most of these books are pretty short. Picnic at Hanging Rock is under 200 pages. Okay, Girls Against God, God is just over 200 pages. So I'm not sure what counts as a novella, but these are the four books I'm gonna try and read over the next week. I have just finished work on Friday, um, but I did ask on Instagram which one you guys thought I should read first. Um, and so I'm gonna look at the answer now. Picnic at Hanging Rock is winning. I think I might be starting with a classic. Um, I have a horrific migraine and I've had a horrific migraine for five days. Um, I think it's because it's humid here and it has been humid for a while. Um, but we will see uh, if that goes away or not. I'm also having chest pains like right here. So it says it's summer and then it says it's Valentine's Day. And I was so confused and I realized we must be in Australia. It is about half past seven in the morning on Saturday. Um, last night I started Picnic at Hanging Rock and I think it's definitely a summerween read um, because I think I mentioned last night that it is set in summer and it is that vibe of like those hazy days of summer where everyone's kind of falling asleep and um, kind of a fever dreamy summer feeling where you are just hot and confused um, and all sorts of strange things could happen. Um, although it's an interesting sort of juxtaposition of vibe um, because we have that kind of, there's this sense of doom potentially happening and um, something uncomfortable. And did it, they asked? It died. Mama always said it was doomed. Edith Echo doomed? What's that mean, Irma? Doomed to die, of course. So there is a kind of ominousness but there is also a very much like early 20th century girls school like twins at Mallory Towers um jolly hockey sticks kind of vibe as well there is a lot of humor and kind of a satirical eye at the class and um gender ideas of the time um but as I said it is half past seven and it is forecast to begin thundering thunderstorming about midday today maybe 11 um, so because uh, the recent month or so we've had sort of intense sunshine followed by lots and lots of rain um, and because my partner and I have been very very busy our garden has gone wild it has exploded um, and that's kind of the vibe we're going for anyway we want a kind of wild garden um, it's good for the wildlife and, and we have a lot of berry bushes and things and we kind of like how wild they are but um, I went to get raspberries the other day and it was quite difficult <laughs> to find the raspberries and the slugs definitely got there before me. So um, I am going to try and tame it a little bit, do some early morning gardening before it gets too hot and it starts raining. Hello, 
so i um got myself all done up ready to do some filming and then i got roped into doing uh building up my boyfriend's new shelves um because he hates flat pack furniture Because it's such a hot and sticky day I had to like blow dry my sweaty hair and restyle my fringe and then I had to hair off up the road because I heard the rag and bone man's bell and um, my boyfriend's broken bike has been sat outside our front door for two weeks and he was otherwise occupied uh, doing some other things so I had to <laughs> chase the rag and bone man's van down with a broken bike um, which he did not realise was scrap at all until I arrived there. So um, now I am showered <laughs> and changed and finally ready to start some filming um, but it's a good job it's summer because if I tried that in January it would already be dark by now. <sighs> so yeah gonna do some filming. Um, haven't read very much more um, but hopefully after I do some filming I can actually focus <laughs> sit down and do some reading. So it's later in the evening now um, and it's, it's starting to get dark and one of the prompts for the Summerween readathon is to read a book in the dark so I'm going to keep reading my picnic at Hanging Rock. I am now just about halfway through and I'm enjoying it but it's not what I was expecting. I think a sinister tale laced with touches of otherworldliness is not the vibe that I'm getting from it so far. Um, it's a lot more Agatha Christie and like cosy mystery. Constable Bumpfer for one had had a belly full of the rock and its mysteries and was looking forward with understandable pleasure to a couple of beers and a nice juicy steak. There's just elements of it that are a little more cosy. However, as I said, I'm now halfway through. And so it starts with these girls from this uh, girls college boarding school in Australia going out to this rock um, because they're gonna have to write a essay on it. And it's Valentine's Day and they're going to have a nice time at the rock. And um, they're getting all sleepy and dizzy in the middle of the afternoon when they've had their lunch and it's hot out. And they start to sort of drift away and doze off. And four of the girls go to get a closer look of the rock and then one of them comes running back screaming as the three others have gone missing and so has one of the teachers and so we're trying to find out what has happened and as i said it's it's been a bit agatha christie with um police officers kind of research kind of trying to work out investigating that's what i mean investigating the mystery um and there is also a kind of young man two young men who are from who were from another party who were also at the picnic there one's a young english chap who's just come over to visit his cousin and uh, his uncle and the other one is an australian guy who works as in the stables of the uncle and so things have started to happen now that are starting to get a little bit more weird mostly it's sort of a description of the landscape that feels slightly treacherous on the rock darkness stored all day in its fetid holes and caves seeped out into the twilight and it was night like it's it's it sounds very flowing and nice it's not quite giving me the creepy atmosphere i was wanting yet so i'm going to try and finish as much of this as i can before i get tired and also inject myself with my immunosuppressants as i do every other week it's supposed to be on a thursday never is though but i have recently spoken to my rheumatologist and she said if it's a few days after it's fine don't worry about it um so yes i'm gonna inject myself with this um and read my book I forgot I'd accidentally bought a signed edition of this. Hello, good morning. Um, I didn't talk to you yesterday because I was super busy and then super tired. Um, but I did finish the picnic at Hanging Rock on Sunday. Um, I, I enjoyed it well enough, um, but it wasn't exactly what I was expecting. All these sort of sinister, laced with other characters of it being like strange and weird. I don't think it really was that weird. Um, it felt much more like a sort of Agatha Christie. Um, there are some Agatha Christies with like a slight magical kind of um, 
supernatural element to them and it read more like that than something like Shirley Jackson or something with a bit more horror strange weirdness to it there were moments that felt bizarre but they often felt like they were just inside people's heads like it was all psychology rather than an actual unexplainedness or a weirdness there were dreams people were having or um moments when someone was sort of half asleep half awake too hot and strange things happen kind of a fever dream situation um and so they never felt like unexplained weirdness they felt like perfectly well explained weirdness um and and also they're very few and far between and as i said the writing um is very like a jolly hockey hockey sticks and so it didn't quite have enough of a vibe of weirdness for me the actual kind of vibe of the writing was so normal and i guess that could be seen as a juxtaposition but for me it didn't really work um well it was fine it was readable it was a nice easy read and i, I did enjoy the reading experience it just was entirely not what i was expecting and not really very summer weenie so um the next book that i am currently reading is sundial by katrina ward um and i'm about 20 percent off the way through it now um it's all from the perspective of this woman rob who is has two children she lives in a sort of middle class suburbia in america somewhere um i think it has been said it's in the east coast but i'm not sure um but she's from the desert and they're going to go back to the desert in a minute with one of her daughters and she feels uncomfortable with one of her daughters her husband is abusive and having an affair and she's kind of very trying to rigidly control herself and everything around her very anxious person um so there have been some weird elements so far the writing is just okay but we will see how it progresses um nothing's got too weird as of yet so um i will come back to you um when i have read some more but for now i am dressed like this because i'm about to cycle to work and i can't find my headphones anywhere so i'm going to be cycling for an hour with no motivation um in my ears uh which is going to be a bit tricky normally i have the distraction of podcasts hello um so i'm not actually much further in this book um i think i was 20 percent when i spoke to you this morning i'm like a third of the way through it now um but it feels like something's about to happen so i thought i should update before things have happened um we have this mother who doesn't trust her daughter and there's kind of the daughter doesn't trust her mother either there's some weird things going on both of them seem fairly strange um there are like little inconsistencies like the mother said i love spring afternoons in her perspective bit and then the daughter's like even though it's winter um so there's like just little inconsistencies which of course like it could be march and they were just having different perspective on things um but also we don't know who's reliable who we can trust whose perspective is honest or if they're both just seeing things from their perspective um but there have been lots of hints about a very dark past happening in the desert and we're in california both both parts are in california it's just like suburban california versus desert california um so i was wrong when i thought it was in the east coast i think that so far it's fine um in terms of i'm, I'm intrigued um but i feel i feel prepared for what's going to happen i feel like there have been enough hints that i have an idea of what's going to happen but I could be being you know red herring and misled there could be a lot of weird things about to happen that i don't know what they are so uh we'll see we'll see if things go off off the rails um i would say that the writing is not giving me what i want in the same way picnic at hanging rock where the writing was fine but it wasn't giving me the eerie atmosphere that <laughs> neither of these books have been particularly atmospheric which is what i want from my horror i like atmospheric horror um and i guess i mean this one is like horror thriller is how it's been described or how it's been like categorized on story graph but i want eeriness i want unsettling feeling and whilst there are definitely unsettling events happening here the atmosphere is not really being brought to life like there was definitely a moment where one of the characters did something where i like gripped onto the pages harder because it was like Ugh, that made me physically uncomfortable but yeah it's just it's just quite a flat like i would say like crime book writing style rather than a sort of more eerie atmospheric weird book writing style i'm gonna try and finish this tonight and talk to you in the morning um but i'm really unwell i'm really unwell i don't know if you can tell from my face because looking at myself in the viewfinder i look like a sickly victorian child um so maybe you can tell uh i have been struggling for a week with this head thing that i thought was migraines and now i am wondering if it's not migraines at all but something entirely different um but it is a struggle at the moment hello i don't actually have time to talk to you this morning um but i have finished sundial by katrina ward um so i will 
talk to you about it when I get back from work. But I wanted to show you that I did look like reasonably presentable today um, before I hopefully cycle home from work and look like a beetroot with helmet hair. So I'm taking Leave the World Behind with me to work, read that on my train in. And um, yeah, I will talk to you about both of these books when I get back from work. I don't know anything high up enough. <sighs> my books might not be set in autumn, but my July definitely seems to be. I um, didn't bother cycling all the way home today because I am exhausted, but I cycled from the station. Got caught in a downpour. The wind whipped my dress up, so uh, the entire lift behind me got an arseful. And um, yeah, it's been a bit uh, of a blustery day, but I finished. The Katrina Ward um, sundial, and um, for over overall, at the end, it was just okay for me. I think it's a combination of getting the wrong end of the stick about a book and reading a book that's like just not my vibe. Um, like it was definitely a thriller, just a straight up thriller. Um, there wasn't anything weird about it. I'm sorry if that's a spoiler, but it was like a bit sci-fi I guess yeah a bit sci-fi I don't know everyone was like it's gonna go wild it gets wild and I'm like mm, it feels reads like a fairly standard thriller to me it doesn't feel that wild or crazy and regardless like it's super plotty and that's not what I want um anyway so I'm disappointed um because I was really looking forward to it and I thought I might like it also like the things it was saying about people who've been victims of extreme abuse um felt a bit icky to me um about like survival of abuse and like genetics and stuff um it just felt a bit icky to me it didn't really um I didn't like it I didn't think it was quite like I was just like you just need to get these kids therapy just get your kids therapy um to, like you need to do some trauma-informed parenting uh which was definitely not going on in this book and I get that that's more interesting but it felt like what it was saying about like genes and genetics um yeah I, I just wasn't there for it I've started Leave the World Behind, but I am still pretty near the book, beginning about 10% of the way into the book, like 30 or so pages, um, so a bit over 10%. The book of an era, interesting. Um, we will see. So far, I think it is clearly going to do something about class and race because it is being very self-conscious about those things in the very beginning. There are lots of like three different mentions about the race of people in the first page. Um, so it's not being subtle <laughs> that is very much at the forefront and there's a whole like l whole shopping list a whole shopping list of what this woman bought when they okay so it's about a family who are going away for the summer to this house in the i'm guessing it's new york state like upstate new york um and they are going to this um airbnb home um and they are kind of middle class but aspiring wealthy um and they all of the sort of class markers are very clearly laid out for us and they are a white family and their whiteness is also very clearly laid out for us and yeah i can feel there is a sense of kind of foreboding going on um and weird sexual things so i'm hoping it gets weird um, weirder than the other two because none of them have scratched my itch for um halloweeny books so far slightly eerie tinged cozy mystery and a thriller um whereas i want i want some creepy books i want something creepy so um, hopefully this will creep me out. I'm going to try and read as much of it as I can tonight. I'm doing reading sprints over on Milena's channel tonight. Um, but I, as I said, I'm exhausted. So hopefully I will wake up in, from my nap in time to do those reading sprints. Good morning. It is the last day of Summerween. Sickly Summerween for me. Um, I feel real rough, which you can probably tell by looking at my face. Um, yeah, uh, I am working from home today because I feel really sick, um, like nauseous and tired and sore. Um, but working from home means that I don't have to, you know, commute. I have more time to sit and read. So I'm halfway through Leave the World Behind. I'm going to try and finish this and do Girls Against God today. I'm going to try and manage it because I, I feel like just lying down doing nothing. So 
hopefully I will be able to focus on the books. Um, Leave the World Behind, as I said, I'm halfway through and I am enjoying the writing for the most part and it's definitely got slightly more creepy vibes than the other ones, I would say. There's some weird things going on in the woods, which is exactly what I want. So it's a really slow burn. All that's happened so far is on the synopsis about these people showing up at the house that they've booked saying that it's their house um, and they want to stay because there's been a uh, blackout but there's no real evidence and there's some weird things going on with technology as well um, and I'm enjoying it but um, some things the one critique I would say is that this book is going to be a critique is a critique of um, like race race and the implications of race the in in interaction between people of different races assumptions made about race there's a lot of talk already about how this family who say the people who say that they live, they own this house, the family who are staying there kind of feel unsure, more unsure than they would otherwise because they are black and they don't think that the house would belong to black people um, and they think maybe they would clean the house but they wouldn't own the house and then there's also sort of questions of class and a lot of reiterations of what university you went to, uh, what you do for a job um, and there's a lot of like almost a lifestyle novelness to it, um, you know just long descriptions, so many, I'm highlighting every time I see a brand name because there's so many like the Vuitton bag or there's like long lists of types of food and what food they're eating what they're drinking yeah alcohol brand names are really common as well what I'm saying what I'm trying to say but saying in a very long-winded roundabout way is that they are very blatant very on the nose there isn't really a subtlety or an allowance of for you to pick up um like read between the lines like I've got a note here that said this one's about gender. It says, I can help. Ruth was already on her feet, hard to discern even to her whether she wanted to or felt she had to. She did like cooking, but was that because convention forced her into the kitchen until she'd learned to enjoy to spend her time there? And it's sort of, so it's just trying very hard in terms of all of the political things. It feels like it's trying very hard and it is make, it's not giving you space as a reader to think that you will understand those connotations without it having to be reiterated over and over again, um, which I something I'm always complaining about. I want writers to trust their readers. Trust us that we will get it. You don't have to be so blatant about it. And then there's also like just a little clumsiness of the overlaying of similes, like I don't know if you can see that, but the amount of times that um, she says like in the same paragraph, like like a story about someone else's day, like the pinch you're supposed to administer, like they own the place. Like there's a lot and lot of similes um, and it is, I always find that clumsy. If you're using too many similes, it always comes off as for a easier read audience. Um, and that's not what I want. So yes, I, I think I'm enjoying it. It's definitely building the eerie atmosphere, but I would say there are some things about this writing that just feel a little clumsier than I would prefer. Hello, I've not got much further in the book, but I have been doing a lot of highlighting. Um, not much more has happened since I last spoke to you, but it has, um, started to get creepier in a way that I'm enjoying. Um, there is some nature writing. There were bugs, dun-coloured toads holding still, mushrooms in fantastical shapes that seemed accidental, the sweet smell of rot, inexplicable damp. And it is, like, creepy and I'm enjoying it and there is more about enroaching nature and stuff that I'm enjoying. But what I wanted to mention that I have had noticed before and haven't talked about is this kind of menacing narrative voice that this book has. There is a narrative voice that speaks out to us sometimes, not almost, not directly, not hello reader, but it says things like what she did not know was this, or um, if some of, if these things had happened, they had, like it, it, it tells us that the, the, the voice, the narrative voice knows something that we and the characters do not. Um, and so it has this sense of foreboding. And also she, the narrative voice is constantly talking is kind of aware of what all of the characters are thinking and so it feels like we know what the characters are thinking and where they're coming from but who knows how trustworthy this narrative voice is because it does feel kind of distanced and menacing um, and I think that that menacing voice is the thing that I'm enjoying most about the book. Sorry if this video has been a bit of a flop. Um, I've just been getting progressively more and more ill as the week's gone on. And now I've just been going around the house to get everything I need to talk to you. And um, I feel like more wiped than when I cycle to work. 
Um, but that's quite a girl's life, isn't it? You, uh, you think you know your limits and then your body's like, <laughs> gonna give you some new limits today. Um, yeah, I feel awful. <laughs> I'm, like, um, I'm gonna be on this sofa pretty much all day, I think. So, um, I'm gonna wrap up the books for Summerween, um, but I'm probably gonna be pretty low energy. Um, so, I finished Leave the World Behind by Rumin Alarm, and I feel conflicted, a little ambivalent about this book, I would say. Um, like I said, it was really hammering home the, the race and class thing, and it was on the level of narrative, but not on the level of plot. On the level of plot, those things barely come into it, um, and I can see how Rim and Alarm was talking about the ways that they affect all of our everyday interactions, whether that's on the surface or not. Um, the the stereotypes, the ideas about class and race that people bring to everything um, affects the way that they move through the world uh, and affects the way that others who come across their path are moved through the world as well. Um, but I do still think that it didn't need to be quite as heavy-handed as it was. I prefer a little trust from my writers, as I've said before. Um, I think if you liked like Severance by Ling Ma, you would like this book, um, but I feel similarly about both of them that, um, or even Station Eleven, I feel similarly about all of them in that there are moments that I enjoyed the, the discussions that they were having and they all had writing that I thought was lovely and um, I enjoyed the kind of smallness of the book, uh, the smallness of the story, despite the bigness of the of the context of the story. But overall, I didn't really fall in love with any of them. I could admire them without loving them. I think this kind of story is just not for me, um, and I didn't know what kind of story it was going into it, and I think that's kind of the point. You're not really supposed to know exactly what is going on. Um, we're supposed to be confused most of the time. I can appreciate that, but I it wouldn't have picked up this story if I knew where it was going, because I know I don't like that kind of story. Um, it just doesn't interest me. I feel like they're all the same, to a certain extent. So, yeah, I think it was well done for what it was, but what it was is not something that I typically tend to read. A thriller, I would say that Sundial is a thriller. I've read a book with orange on the cover, Sundial again. I read a book in the dark. Um, I'd say that Picnic at Hanging Rock, I think, is probably the shortest of these. I don't know, they're probably all novels, really, but there are all three short novels, three of them are short novels. Well, this one, actually, Girls Against God, which I started last night, is a kind of theory fiction, a blend of ideas about feminism, film, art, with a fictional story. Um, so I guess it's not it's not wholly a novel. There's some other elements to it as well, um, and it's, it's it's shorter than this one, but I think it's still longer. Picnic at Hanging Rocks, less than 200 pages, so that was definitely the shortest. Um, and I read a book in the dark. The only thing I haven't done is read a book set in the autumn. All of these books are summer, spring books. Um, this one, I, it's been mentioned, summer has been mentioned, um, but it's kind of set over a long period of time, but none of them have been autumnal books. This one, as I said, I started last night and I have read, yeah, I'm about 60 pages, 60 pages into it. Um, so I'm, I'm not gonna finish it in this vlog. Um, I was going to try to, but having started it, I think that this um, book requires more time and for me to really sit with it um, and think about it, because as I said, it is a blend of fiction and theory, and there are lots of talk about like women's work and what it means to be a witch, what why the intersection between witch hunts and the rise of capitalism, ideas about creation of the self and um, our connections with the past and how one person can create the self, uh, what even is the self and how we cannot get out of the context in which we live, uh, we cannot separate ourselves from the world, uh, subjectivity in art, all this sort of thing um, and so it, it Several of these paragraphs have required me to read over them again when I wasn't quite fully focused. And at first I was struggling to get into it. And I think it's because I've read three like plotty, novelly, well, I don't know if you'd call this plotty, but like it is a novel about characters and events. Um, whereas this is, is a different style of reading um, and it will require more focus. But once I've got into that, I'm, I'm happy to do that, but it is gonna take me I can't just rush through it, I have to like focus, spend time with it, I don't want to ruin my reading experience by not focusing. And I did consider listening to the audiobook because it is available on script, however, um, one, I think this type of writing will benefit from me reading it physically, but two, the audiobook narrator had a lisp, and whilst nothing against having a lisp, it's quite hard to listen to sped up. Um, 
the lisp sped up so um that didn't that didn't work for me but yeah um this this has been uh not the most interesting of videos i don't think the, not the most exciting of vlogs but i have enjoyed some aspects of this reading unfortunately none of the books so far have really spoken to me i've not really loved them this one is the one i have the most hopes for now um but i have appreciated all of them in different ways um but i think all three of them were are victims to the fact that I had a different idea about them than what they actually turned out to be. What I have enjoyed doing though is spending my time focused on one book at a time. I'm very much more of a bookish polygamist normally and read as many books as I feel like at a time, jump between them. Like, I'm not exactly a mood reader because I plan but I'm a mood reader in that I pick up whichever book I'm reading at that time that I'm in the mood for at that time. Um, but I have enjoyed spending all my time with one book and I think it's actually, it's hard to say if I'm reading more because um, I've got through the books faster but obviously that's because I'm not interspersing it with other books. I've also enjoyed reading all the books physically. I'm a big proponent of audiobooks and there are definitely some books that I think it's better to read on audiobook like Demon Copperhead which I read recently which is set in Appalachia and told from the voice of a man from Appalachia and as obviously I'm from London. Um, it, it was being such a voicey book, it was good to have a voice, to put a voice to it. But of course, this week has really made me think about how much there is when you listen to an audiobook, um, the mediation and how you are, are one remove from the book. Uh, obviously, there is mediation between me and the writer when it comes to reading this book, um, the, the form in which it's published, um, the the editing and all that. Um, the, there is a lot of mediation, even like the cover, the advertising, all of those things mediate my reading of this book. Um, but in terms of, but it's much more blatant with audiobooks because there is a performance, there is um, an interpretation that has gone on before you have received the book. Um, whereas when I'm reading this, there is mediation between me and what the book was originally, but between me and the literal words on the page, it's it's just one step. There's no um, extra space between those things. And um, so I've been thinking about the concept of performance when it comes to listening to audiobooks and how the effect that that has on one's reading. It's something that I used to think didn't really affect me that much um, because I am so used to audio and because it makes me able to read a lot of things. So there's nothing against audio reading, but I've just been considering the difference and the ways that I can um, consider how those, how the form in which I'm reading it affects my reaction to the reading. Um, uh, just something I've been thinking about, the steps between, the steps of interpretation and the ways that things differ. Um, and so I think that sometimes a performance in audio can sound cringier than it would read on the page or vice versa, it can sound more authentic when you actually hear a voice saying it. Um, anyway, this is an entirely unrelated discussion uh, that I've been, just some things I've been thinking about. Um, but I hope you have enjoyed this video. I am uh, gonna just lie down now. So I'll see you again very soon. Bye.